Hey everyone, what's up? Today we're having a look at the Acer Spin 3N. We're gonna take it for a spin. No pun intended, I lie, total pun intended. The configuration we have here today is rocking Intel's i5 1135G7 processor. Yes, it is Evo certified, eight gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabytes of storage. We also have Intel's Iris XC graphics powering this thing. Additionally, the latest Wi-Fi 6, as well as Bluetooth 5 standards. And finally, this is the 13.3 inch screen variant. And yes, it is QHD+. We're gonna see if the Acer Spin 3 has what it takes to compete in a fiercely aggressive two-in-one mainstream market, or if it's gonna get left behind in the dust. As always, if you guys enjoyed this review, hit that like button, sub to my channel. You have no idea how meaningful those small actions are to this channel and how happy they make me. Thanks for watching, let's get started. Starting off with the packaging, as you can see, you get one of the most generic looking cardboard boxes you'll see your entire life. Thankfully, you do have some branding by Acer to let you know this is in fact the Acer laptop. Once you remove the content seal on the top of the box, lay down and proceed to actually open it, the first thing you'll see inside of course is the laptop itself in a soft cloth protective sleeve. Remove all that stuff and here it is in all its glory. This thing is nimble, but it looks premium. More on that in a quick minute. Past that, you do have a 45 watt charging adapter. What I really like here, however, is that you have a USB-C charging solution right out of the box, which is great to see. Past that, you have the standard wall out the charging cable piece. And finally, you have the warranty information regulation, quick start guide and all that fun stuff. As far as design goes, the Acer Spin 3 is definitely a piece of work. And I mean that in a great way. So this laptop has a mostly metallic finish. So it weighs about 3.1 pounds, which is somewhat heavier than the average for a 13 inch laptop. But like I said, it's mostly justified. Starting off with the top side, you have a nice metallic finish. It doesn't have any particular texture. It's smooth to the touch, but it feels nice and premium. Also, you have the Acer branding in the center. Nothing too flashy, nice and simple. Making our way to the rear side of this laptop, the first thing you'll notice is that you have your two standard hinge brackets, but you'll also notice you actually have two speaker grills, one on either side. And the reason for this is because this is a two-in-one laptop to maximize sound exposure. And then in the dead center, you have the heat exhaust vent. This is the only one, so it is the primary way the laptop releases all the heat. Making our way to the size of this laptop, consider me impressed. The IO port diversity here is exceptional. So you still have a proprietary D charging port. Right next to that, you have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, a HDMI port. You also have a USB 3.2 port with reverse charging capability, a micro SD card reader slot. But we're not done yet because on the other side, you have the good old headphone jack. Right next to that, you have one more USB 3.2 port. And if you look carefully, you'll notice you actually have an insert slot for the stylus itself. This is how you remove the stylus. And by the way, when you put it back in, the stylus starts charging. The integration here is phenomenal. Finally, making your way to the bottom side of the laptop, you'll first notice you have two very large air intake vents. This is also where the cooling fan is hosted. So plenty of air going in. Another thing that's really impressive is that you have a metallic bottom finish as well, which is very rare for mid-range laptops. As soon as you unfold this laptop, you truly appreciate the high quality inner chassis here. The palm rest has a reasonable amount of space given that this is a 13 inch laptop. Making your way to the trackpad, you have a ample amount of real estate space to surf around here, which is great. You'll also notice on the top left side is where you have the fingerprint scanner hosted. And yes, there is a little bit of flex towards the lower corners, but it's not so bad that I would go as far as calling it a bad experience. Overall, this is a relatively high quality trackpad. The keyboard, generally speaking, is a very healthy experience. So you do have nice and wide keycaps that minimizes any chances of making typos. Additionally, key travel, while not exceptional, is pretty good given the size of this keyboard. And also you'll notice that every keystroke is very tactile in nature. Generally speaking, it's a very fun experience to type on this machine. Now, unfortunately, due to its small size, you don't get a dedicated 10 keypad. It's also worth noting this is a fully backlit keyboard with a two-tier lighting system. My only 
nitpicky thing about this keyboard is that the arrow keys are very small. They definitely could have been larger. Directly above the keyboard, you have the spin branding. And right above that, you'll notice you have another speaker grill. This is again to maximize sound exposure. Now, as far as the hinge quality goes, generally speaking, this is a very sturdy and reliable piece of mechanism. It's a two tier hinge system. My only concern is that the connection points are a little weak and this may impact long-term durability, but time will tell in that regards. Now, making our way to the display fitting, you'll notice you have a relatively thick chin, but that's okay because it looks very sleek with that black Acer branding going on there. Now, the actual bezels themselves are very narrow and more or less in line with 2022 standards. Making our way to the top, you have a somewhat thick forehead, but it also hosts that mediocre 720p webcam, which while not the worst of the bunch, isn't anything to write home about either. The Acer Spin 3 definitely blows most of the competition out of the water when it comes to display quality. So you have a resolution of 2560 by 1600, a aspect ratio of 16 by 10. Yes, this is a IPS panel and there is practically no screen flickering at any level of brightness whatsoever. You do have a standard refresh rate of 60 Hertz. As far as the touch capabilities goes, you can use your fingers to control the screen, but the stylus is where it's really at. So I found there was no visible latency. It's a very smooth experience. What you actually actually press on the screen is what you see right away. Definitely thumbs up there. Past that, in terms of color accuracy, you have a 100% sRGB color rating or 68% Adobe RGB. While this isn't the best display in the market, it's definitely feasible for most content creation and creative users alike. My only thing that I don't like about this display is its mirrored 300 nits peak brightness. While it's not the worst of the bunch given you have a very glossy display over here, it's a lot of reflection and under brighter settings at 300 nits is just not enough to compensate for all that external lighting coming in. In terms of performance, the Acer Spin 3 is about as good as an i5 processor can be. So as far as web browsing goes or word processing, watching videos on YouTube, it's gonna be a very smooth experience. There will be no lag or any sort of performance drop. When you restart really pushing this machine to its limits by let's say start doing 4K video editing, for example, you'll notice a couple of things. Generally speaking, the machine is able to sustain performance for a short period of time before you start seeing the occasional frame drop. And that's because a fair bit of heat builds up. Additionally, that eight gigabytes of RAM doesn't do it any favors, it would have been nice to have at least 16 on this device. Now in the gaming side of things, things are slightly better. I found games like GTA 5 can actually run at a steady 30 plus frames per second at the native resolution. This is pretty impressive all things considered. Of course, as the machine gets warmer, you do start seeing more drops in the frame rate. For those of you who are concerned about thermals, under its absolute peak load, this machine can get a surface temperature of about 39 degrees Celsius, which is uncomfortable. However, under a more realistic sustained high load, you'll be at a comfortable 31 degrees Celsius, which is pretty reasonable in my opinion. And under lower loads or mid loads, you'll find you hover around the 24 degrees Celsius mark, which again is very much comfortable. Now, in terms of fan noise, this is a very quiet machine when the fans aren't spinning loud. In fact, you can hardly tell they're there. However, However, at its absolute loudest, the fan can hit a peak noise of 38 decibels, which again, isn't really all that bad, and this usually happens in short waves or bursts. In terms of battery life, the Acer Spin 3 is just okay. So I found under mid-load usage, doing stuff like watching HD videos, Netflix, web browsing, keeping brightness at 50%, I was able to squeeze just about eight hours of battery life. However, doing more heavier tests like 1080p video editing immediately dropped the battery life to about five hours. This isn't anything great in my opinion. There are laptops that perform better. Keep in mind, you do have a more intensive screen here with a higher resolution. Now, as far as speaker quality goes, I wasn't impressed either. There's practically no bass in the actual speakers and the volume levels, while not super low, aren't all that loud either. It's just about what I'd consider an average laptop speaker. Have a quick listen for yourself. Just 
Priced at $900 USD, the Acer Spin 3 is definitely more expensive as far as mid-range 2-in-1 laptops go, but you get a lot for that money. You get a high quality build, most of the laptop has a metallic coating finish. Additionally, a great display with a high amount of color accuracy, a crisp resolution, a decent keyboard and trackpad. Also, you have plenty of IO ports to make sure you'll never run out of them as far as the laptop usage goes. A few things holding this machine back, of course, include its lackluster battery life at just eight hours of day-to-day -day usage. Additionally, the laptop's performance, while decent, isn't anything to write home about. There is a fair bit of thermal throttling. However, to be fair, the laptop still manages to stay relatively cool. All in all, I think this is a very content creator focused type of laptop or creative user focused laptop. It definitely gets a lot of things right that other two in ones don't. I can wholeheartedly recommend the Acer Spin 3 to anyone who has the budget to afford it. I think this is a value packed machine that may be charging slightly more, but it's giving you a lot more for that difference in pricing. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, hit that like button, sub to my channel. It helps me grow. Thanks for watching. See you next year.